Greetings and welcome back to Smartwatch Ticks. We've got a really big box in here today. Way bigger than I thought would be what's inside of it. And so I didn't set this thing up for the camera being like um, really far away because I thought I'd have a small box. But here we are with something that's sealed so good I don't even know how to get into it. Wow. It's it's like glued. Okay, I slit all the sides. You see that, yeah? Oh, okay. No, no cracks there. No cracks there. I think I'm going to have to rip the box open. That's glued. That's glued. That's glued too. And that's the only area there is oh wait a minute wait a minute is that a pull tab i think we found a pull tab all right we're getting somewhere man this is i'm not used to this kind of packaging okay here it is gps sports band and a whole lot of wow i can have fun with that that, that that's not what we're reviewing a GPS band, professional design for sports. Let's take a look. The running, walking, cycling, and more. Yeah, anything on here? Hope there's not like a, a number. <laughs> I, I don't think this has a phone in it, so there's not all the IMEI and stuff. Let's take a look. We've, we've got a charger. We've got the band. Yep, this is it. Just put in a really big box. So what is it? Let's take a look before we even get started. It is the S908 GPS Sport Smart Band. Now, it's coming to us from GearBest, and we've got a buying link, of course, down below. Check it out for getting the best price on this one. Wait till you see this one. Um, this is ushering in a whole new class of sports bands slash watches. It's like the shape of a band but it's bigger and thicker and wider like a watch and the fact that it has GPS on it is gonna mean that we can do things um, that we haven't been able to do just typically picking up your your steps and your pulse and stuff like that in most of the common smaller bands uh, this is the uh, overall specifications and the dimensions, so you can check if it's going to fit you. And let's take a look. We can peel this off. It's telling you that there's a touch button right there. That's important to know. And you can see a little thing there that says it's got a touch button. Uh, the band is the TPU type rubberized band uh, with holes in it for sweat. So you can breathe in this. It's definitely made for doing sports. Heart rate sensor, charging area that is coupled up, no doubt, with this thing. This must be the charger. USB on this end. And a definite uh, interesting design here, custom made for this one. You see it'll snap in place. Not magnetic, but uh, mechanical. It snaps and push to release it. A little depression there that rides where the heart rate sensor is and the two prongs for charging. So we're not transferring data to the computer or anything by uh, connecting it because it only has the two prongs, you know, for, um, for charging. But uh, it does have Bluetooth built into it. So you'll be able to transfer the data to an app that way. And when you take the insert out, we get the book in a variety of languages there and English okay GPS band okay big sheets wow let's uh you see in all of that let's have you take a look again put your YouTube in freeze frame and blow it up on your big TV I guess to be able to read it there's the um, QR code that you scan for either uh, iOS or Android and you can search sport and connect it says 
we'll definitely take a look at that. And then another page gives you the parameters, warranty service information. Okay. Now we're getting into what it looks like on. Oh boy, we're going to be busy. There's your home page with your time and date and all the different icons in this lower left corner that you'll be uh, experiencing. Then you have a whole variety of sports and just depending on the sport you choose, you're going to get different displays. Here you see walking, running, and climbing. Climbing is going to give you altitude as well, you know. And then we come over here to riding, swimming, and sport data processing. And then there's the commands for doing all the other things, uh, set and view history, and so forth, including sedentary reminders and sleep monitoring on this device. Pretty sophisticated. There's your heart rate information. And finally, it has vibration, it says. Very nice. Okay, let's uh, attempt to turn it on. Um, I imagine... Turning it on is going to be pressing and holding. That's usually what happens. Let's do that. Press, hold, hold, keep holding. A little longer. All right. I got to go charge it up. We'll charge it and I'll be back. We'll give this thing a run through. Well, it's good for this one to, to read the manual and learn how it works, especially this page one, because it lets you know that you've got basically three buttons on here an enter button in the upper right a back button below that and then a page down button and you're going to see as we run through this it's important to really understand and use those properly also when you uh, scan the qr code you're going to find that it brings up this app called h plus h plus will be our interface app we'll talk about that in just a minute so let's turn it on Actually, it's already on. It's, uh, it's attempting to do heart rate monitor reading from me right now because I've set it to do it 24-7 to accumulate my heart rate data to present in a graph. And you're going to see that. It does it pretty quickly. Well, it's still going. All right, while I hold... Eh, we'll just skip that reading. Let's go ahead and get into this. I can press one of these two side buttons and it'll just turn on and you can see it. In order to actually physically turn it on and off, it's the lower right button. If I press and hold, and hold, it'll say bye, and it'll turn itself off, and it's very quick. And you press and hold again, and it says welcome, and you're back. Now, I'm filming this right now at the crack of dawn. Yes, I know. Um... Why? Because the lighting is very dim, and it's needed to be that way so that the watch is visible to you right now. And I can tell, notice you don't turn it on at all with this one. It has to be a button push on the side or a twist. Or a twist. Oh, well, not behaving. Um, when I turn it on, it looks pretty bright to you in the camera. It does to me. But when I look at it from the side, it's pretty dim. One of the major drawbacks of this watch, we'll get that out of the way right away, is the screen. It's barely readable, and this is its brightest setting right now. And um, if I were in outdoors, not even in the bright sunlight, but just outdoors, I can hardly see it at all. If I'm in the sunlight, even if I try to, you know, shade it to see it, I really can't, especially when you get to the fine details of these smaller numbers, uh, it's, for me, practically unusable outdoors, which is really sad. If this had a reflective type screen or a different technology, it could be a decent watch band thing. All right, let's walk through it. When you turn it on uh, and you hit the back button, you get to the time. As far as I can tell, there's only one time display. It's showing you the time, the battery charge, the date, and this side thing is telling you uh, where you are in your step count against your goal for the day. When you tap this button, you cycle through a report of your last set of readings. And I haven't done anything yet. 
Um, so uh, the readings are, are either zero or yesterday's. This is like a 16-hour running uh, graph of your heart rate. And I have to be quick on this. Um, it's showing you your average and uh, ups and downs, peaks and valleys. Problem with this is it's not against any calibrated um, numbers on the side. So I can't tell when that was taken or what the amount is. But it just shows that I have high variability. It's not all even. So I had some exercise and some rest periods. It's about what I can tell out of that. Press it again. You get to this round eye button that doesn't do anything no matter what I press. It's an information button, I guess. Um, but it just shows eye. Then when you tap it again, you're back to time. One, two, three, four, and you're back. When you press and hold, it does the same thing backwards. So this is a forward and backward scrolling that you get on this. Now, from here, if I press the top button once, I can select what sport I want. When you're doing running, you have just uh, the collecting the data. When I mean, I'm walking. When you do running, you have GPS. Hiking gives you GPS. Biking gives you GPS. Swimming does not. Those are the modes that you have. Now, let's talk a little bit about this GPS. Um, it's an interesting thing. It's, in, in, you know, it's embedded in here. And uh, when it turns on, like here for running, and here get you going, and here starts it. It just said start in the running mode, counting the time, counting the pulse. Oh, notice it's taking a reading of thin air. Um, that gets me a little worried, but nonetheless, uh, that's its operation. Um, and then this is your distance. So with the modes that use GPS, the distance is calculated from the GPS track. Now, when you look at the advertising, there's a, a picture of a graph that shows the beginning point and the track to the ending point. And there's no way that you can display that, not in the app and not on the, uh, the band. It, uh, it, it's just an advertising thing. What it does accumulate here is um, the track distance for computing your actual steps. So rather than using the pedometer to calculate your steps when you're running or hiking or biking, obviously you're not going to get step count biking, but it uses the actual GPS coordinate distance to calculate the route that you took to give you your effective overall distance from which it calculates, I presume, your caloric burn and all of that other stuff, all your calories used. So we're still going here. If I press it and, and no distance at all, you see, uh, but a, a rapid heartbeat of thin air. Theoretically, if I touch it, I should normalize to my actual heart rate. We'll give that a shot. 128, 139, 140, 142. Okay, you see that thing? I have a, a threshold set at 130. If it exceeds 130, it's supposed to notify me and vibrate. That did work when I have it on my arm and I'm getting the pulse uh, taken and I'm exercising feverishly, I did get that uh, to happen. You notice it happened again when it fell below a threshold that I set for it. So this is nice that you have a banding of your upper and lower threshold of your heart rate. So when you're exercising, you could tell if you've exceeded and you're going into anaerobic zone. It's always on when you're in these uh, type of modes and we're in this um, running mode right now. So I press it one more time and it said stop or pause. If I do it again, it starts it back up and continues from where I was. Press it again and we're back into the stop or pause and it stopped the time. And then if I, what do I do? If I press and hold, ah, press and hold the back button, takes me back. There we go. And I can select to save it or throw it away, or continue. 
So in this case, since I didn't do anything, I'm going to throw it away. I scrolled and now I select. And that data was thrown away. So I can go back and these are then the different exercises you can select. If I pick this one and start it, uh, this is mountain climbing. And if I touch this, you get these different uh, things like showing your change in altitude. And 86.60 with a chart there. It's all in the manual what these uh, different uh, displays are. But you cycle through them with this. Number of steps, calories burned. Uh, looks like a flag. And then here's your bracketed uh, heart rate. And I believe after you've accumulated some heart rate data, these things fill in so you can see what percentage of the time you're in uh, the particular heart rate zone. Kind of cool. There's something with this, uh, the GPS flashing, which to me tells me it has not acquired GPS yet. But we're indoors, we're not outdoors. So when you get GPS, that goes solid. Okay, and that's it. And again, time and heart rate and everything are tracking. So you cycle through all of the things that each of these modes offer you. And you press there to stop. Press there to go back and throw it away. Oh, I hit the back button instead. See how you got to get this down? And that's the execute button. Okay, now I want to go back and choose bicycling just to show you that you collect this kind of data. Now, you notice those first ones were like speedometer. So this is a fun one for running in a car, I guess, and, uh, and, and, and seeing how fast you're going. There you go. Speedometer and uh, time, it looks like, increment. Heart rate, calories burned, and a flag for probably laps or a total distance covered. Okay, that's that. Are we still in it? Oh, we weren't. Start, stop, and throw away. All right, <laughs> getting the sequence down. And the rest of them are like that. Swimming is sort of like walking. You don't get any GPS tracking on it. So when you start this one, you're getting time, heart rate, and um, count of arm movement. A couple of other things. There's another calories. Oh, there the heart rate thing is going wild, saying I'm exceeding my heart rate. Again, you get that chart. And that chart. I think the 655 is the time, right? Is that what time it is now? Let's stop and throw that away and come back. Yeah, it was 655. So that display was showing the time. And uh, below it would either be the flashing GPS, a solid GPS, or no GPS shown if you're, if you're in the mode that doesn't use GPS. Okay, so... When you press this button, we get into a whole bunch of settings. This one, when we execute that, lets you see your history, first of all, which is this for today. I've walked 10 steps, that many calories, and that looks like the location indicator, and nothing else. So you get those three items of information. I can go back. And I can switch to my goal. And here's where you can set your goal in the device by incrementally going up or down. That's down. And press and hold is going back up. So there's 8,000 steps as a goal. And that's there. And then that's your history. Going back to here, I can come down and you have uh, the uh, results for each of the different things that you have done. We did a run, right? Let's select it, get the history. Okay, we didn't save it, that's right. So here's all of the data. Unfortunately, I had uh, a really nice one from yesterday with all sorts of data in it, and it doesn't show that. 
In fact, I did two or three. And it doesn't show anything except the most recent one. And I have not found a way to cycle through to get to any other ones. As you can see, it just stuck on the last result. And it's in small, a uh, lot of information, but it's a small display overall. If it's dim outside, I mean bright outside and uh, the dim display. So I'm having a challenge with being able to get the data I want, retain the data I want, and be able to uh, see it when I'm actually out doing uh, the exercising. Back up. Again, you can set your overall goal here. It's at 3,000 steps, I guess, uh, for running. Um, anyway, each of these has their own setup. Hiking, biking, and swimming. Then you get into this, which is where you can set your overall lap distance, as I understand it. And here you set whether you want to automatically trigger a new lap each time you hit that threshold or whether you want to do it manually, meaning you'd have to press the button to initiate a new lap. That's that part. Then you get down to sedentary uh, reminders, which is when you want to stand up and the time frame you want it to happen on. This is the cycle, and that's how uh, uh, the time zone... Well, let's take a look. On or off, and how many minutes you want it to be to remind you to stand up. And that's it for those two. And down to here, into there... That's when you want the interval to start, and then you set the stop because you don't want to um, have it happening while you're asleep, right? So you go through these, and you can set all of that. Back, back. That's sedentary reminding. Then you get down to your sleep reminder. And um, that's the information, I guess. That's your history of your sleep. I presume. <laughs> and we're going to go back. Yeah, yeah. Anytime you see that, that's like uh, your record. And then we go down to your heart rate. This is where you can turn it on or off. And you can have it uh, set thresholds and turn it on or off and set your high threshold and your low threshold. So anything above 130 or below 70 is going to cause this thing to vibrate for me. You don't have a lot of differentiation, especially on the low one. You see it'll go from 70 down to 55, 50, 80, 80 to 50. Those are the, uh, the range that you wanna, uh, you're going to be in. So if you wanted to keep your pulse above 100, you're doing some sort of a, a, an aerobic uh, ex workout and you wanted to be in a high zone, you're not able to have that lower threshold any higher than 80. Interesting, huh? But you can do your upper threshold uh, higher and lower. You can get down to 90, 90 to 180 for your upper threshold. So most of the time, you'd probably be saying, okay, I don't want to go above 140 or whatever is kind of computed for you. And uh, so you set that threshold that at that point and le turn this on. And then you'll be getting continuous heart rate monitoring and vibration for when you exceed your threshold. And finally, we have settings, overall settings for GPS. This, if I press it, shows you your GPS location. And you see that in the pictures in the advertisement. Um, but you don't need to see all of my data. This uh, lets you turn on and off vibration. Off, on. Okay. And I am feeling the vibration each time we go through here. Now, this is the one where we have uh, brightness. It's in auto right now. And you can turn that off, and it would be in manual. 
So it's uh, automatically adjusting it for the lighting. Let's turn it off for a moment and come back out of here. Come down to an alarm. This is where you can actually set a regular alarm. And oh yeah, on this watch, when you tether it, it does not pick up the time from the device you're tethering to. So you have to set the date and time manually. That was kind of a pain. And I don't know if it's going to drift over time or not because, you know, it's not pulling the uh, network time. So you probably have to check the time regularly. Here's where we set the brightness. Now, it's at a level 6 right now. There's 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. That's its dimmest. And I'm already dim right now. I mean, this is great for in a dark room at night. If the good number to set it on so you don't wake up, you know, and have the bright light in, in your face from your arm moving. But six is not all that bright. If I had really strong lighting uh, out there right now, uh, that would be hardly readable at all. So that's an issue, is the brightness. But here's where you can set six different levels of brightness. And then you get down to where you can set all of your parameters for calculating your fitness stuff, your gender, your age, height in centimeters, weight in kilograms, and that's it. And that data is what you use, or what it uses to calculate stuff for you. And then finally, we've got the reset everything, no or yes. Uh, we haven't done anything, so let's say yes and go back. And that should have reset everything. And then we get the information, one that we've seen show up before but never could do anything with. And on this, at this point, you can actually see the serial number, I guess it is, and the version of the firmware that's running in this device. Yes. Then it cycles back again to the very top. You can't get up to Bluetooth. It's not letting me go up there and turn it on or off. I presume it's always on uh, looking for tethering or being tethered. But it uh, doesn't get there when you cycle through these large number of things. It comes right back up to uh, your GPS. But Bluetooth is listed but not available. Okay, then that's settings. So we had your overall steps. The different sports, but you can see the results, setting your loops, sedentary reminder, sleep monitoring, heart rate, and overall settings. And then you're back to the time from which you can select your sport that you want to begin working in. You press it once more. You get to that page which shows you the information that you can cycle through the items that are available to you down here. It's 7.05 in the morning, there's no GPS. And then if I press it again, I start, press it again, I stop. And you do that for each of the different sports that you have access to. So that's how the band works and the things that you can see on the band. How does it work with the app when you tether to it? Let's take that one on. We bring over uh, the phone, and uh, you're in the H Plus app. That's what I was mentioning. And when you uh, get into it, it looks like this. This is the data that I collected from today. And so far, from this morning, it resets at midnight. And this is another issue I have, is that that's all I've got is today's information. I can't go back and look at yesterday. As far as I can tell, there's no way to slide it. None of this stuff is active. Uh, it's just today's data. So, for you guys, I did a screenshot of yesterday since I had so much data. And here's uh, what I had done. That many steps, the distance, active time, calories, heart rate, battery, and then... Uh, Bluetooth, RSSI, I think that's signal strength, and then the device version always is blank. But that was the information I got there. It also had this information for uh, sleep time. That was not the correct date, so I think that was lingering from something else or when I first turned it on. But theoretically, we'll see that in a minute when we get into the app, you should be able to see your sleep information. 
Oh, and then there was one other thing. Well, I, I didn't take a screenshot of that. Okay, so that was yesterday's information. Let's go back live. Oh, by the way, the app itself, I just wanted to show you that when you check it out, the H Plus app tells you what it does. It's a client application for a band. And the most recent update was June of 2015. So we're not on an active app that's being maintained here. Don't expect to see a lot of changes and improvements to this particular app for this particular device. What you see is what you get, because it's been dormant for over two years now. So, the actual app itself. Here we are. This is today. Then you can get into settings. This is where you connect or disconnect it. Um, when you hit sync, it constantly says syncing, but I don't ever get it to go away from that. But it does, when you're over here on today, seem to be updating this regularly for us. So it's doing kind of a live syncing, but in terms of a deeper syncing, perhaps for the fitness data itself, it doesn't seem to be working. Best wishes is kind of weird. You can say who, and you can pick one of your relatives. I don't know. I presume they're expecting that you have your relatives all hooked up as well. Uh, and you can wish them any of these wishes. Happy birthday, happy new year, merry Christmas, or thank you. Totally useless. Um, and I'm not even sure how it goes to whom it goes to. But you do have notifications that you can receive in tethering from your phone for incoming calls, messages, um, you know, your text messages. You have the ability to set the uh, interval for reminding you to do some exercise. That's the sedentary one, which you can set also inside of here. Do some exercises, take medication. There's your alarm and timer that you can set. And again, this would be pushed to the band from here. Here's where you can set your user data. Now, I'm not sure if when you set it here and uh, it synchronizes that setting back to here, or if you change here, it sends it to there, or they're two independent things. We're hoping that if you set it here, it would actually send it over there. Um, nonetheless, verify it on here if it's important to you that your calories burned is accurate based on your height and your weight. The screen timer. Uh, that's how long it will stay on before it times out, and you can set that for a time delay. I've uh, got it set at 10 seconds. Our anti-loss is for when you separate your, your device from the phone, and it'll uh, vibrate to let you know that you're separated apart. Uh, anti-loss is on for vibration, and then you can have it also have the sound on if you want to really know. Erasing your user data, that erases all user data which is self-explanatory, I guess. And then device shutdown. If I hit that, are you sure you want to shut it down? I say, okay. Well, it's supposed to say bye. Oh, it's already shut it down that quick. Okay. Then I have to press and hold to turn it back on again. There you go. You see it's barely visible unless I get this out of the, out of the screen because that's changing the brightness. But... Uh, that's really a dim screen. All right, an overall version number here. Then, your sports data. This is where all of the data that we had accumulated from those various sports that we saw on the band itself, remember, uh, that that data should be transferred over here, but it's not. And sleep data, same thing. I'm not getting a transfer of that data either. I believe that's because the sync isn't ever finishing syncing, and because the app is updated through June of 2015, the sync issue may not be resolved between the app and the band. So for using this, you'd have to count on looking at the information from your last run, walk, swim, or hike on the, uh, the band itself before you do another one, because the new one will wipe that data out, and you won't be able to rely on seeing it here in the app it, um, either. Some little um, drawbacks to this, but nonetheless, for the price, it's an interesting little device. Uh, it is kind of a crossover between a watch 
and a, and a fitness band. It's got a really nice breathable band that you can put on. This actually has a little thing that can snap in there and hold it in place. Again, you cannot activate it from here. You have to do that. It's supposed to do the twist and show time, and it was doing that before. I'm not sure what's going on right now. And you can go through a course and look at all your data. So, one more time. This comes to us from GearBest. It's called the S908 GPS Sports Smart Band. Uh, Going to get you a discount down below, definitely below 40 bucks, and something to think about. It comes in black, yellow, or red. You can see the other colors on the website, and uh, that's something you can take for a spin. It does biking. It's totally waterproof, so you can do swimming, and it relies on the GPS for accumulating your data for biking and swimming and um, running and... Uh, hiking as well including uh, the differential in altitude so that data is available the limitation is it's only on the watch it doesn't seem to transfer easily and comfortably over to the tethering app uh, so you probably need to make note of it write it down somewhere you've been watching smartwatch ticks we appreciate your subscription really hey we're almost up to thirty thousand of you guys that's awesome uh, we'll see you again real soon with uh, some more interesting things that are on the way in